In this video, we'll take a look at upgrading firmware from older MPP firmware to newer MPP firmware. We'll first take a look at the current MPP firmware the phone has, 11.3.4 MPP firmware, also known as 3PCC firmware. Next, we'll check the IP address of the phone itself. Okay, so it's .42.192.168.1.42 .1 RFC 1918, okay. And we're going to take a look at what we'll be using today. We'll be using TFTP D64, which is an easy to use um, TFTP D application, or I should say TFTP protocol application. And then um, on the left hand side, I have the binaries we'll be using 11. 3.6 MPP. The specific phone we'll be upgrading is 8832. As far as the TFTP D64 software, typically I find downloading the zip version. So the TFTP D64 standard edition zip version, as you notice, it's 4.52. The uh, site uh, typically I go to is directly uh, from the person that developed this application, as you can see here, located in France. And then the next thing we're going to take a look at is the actual binaries for the 8832 phone. So we want to find the MPP binaries. Those were actually the enterprise. So I went back to the IP phones, then I selected the MPP platform, and then 8832. And then we're going to select the multi-platform firmware. And that's going to be what we want to download, the 11. 3.6 MPP firmware, also known as 3PCC. I've already done that, but basically these are the steps you'd want to do. You unzip the firmware, you put it into a folder, basically this folder I'm calling TFTP, then I have the actual binaries for the folder that I unzipped, 11-3.6 as you can tell, that's what you're seeing on the left hand side right there. So right now as far as my TFTP D application and the binaries are all ready, And then what we want to do is we want to copy the file that ends with the downloads. That's going to instruct the phone what exactly needs to upgrade as far as firmware. So admin, advanced, we're going to go under voice, we're going to go under provisioning, and then we're going to find the section for the firmware upgrade. Okay, and then you can see I was doing some testing earlier. So we're going to change that to a different server, dot .33, and then we're going to paste in the dot .loads for the 11.3.6 MPP software. So we have tftp colon forward slash forward slash the IP address of our server, forward slash, and the name of the downloads file. So we look good, and we should be able to go in and apply it. The one thing to note is um, if you run into any problems, check to make sure the firewall like the windows firewall or if you have any third party security applications that are not blocking the actual tftp protocol on your pc okay and we'll take a look at the application itself um, the one convenient part with this applica application the tftp d64 is they have a log viewer tab, if you notice I've clicked on, and it also shows child windows that pop up as the actual download of the binaries occurs. So it's something that's uh, real time, and you'll know fairly quickly if you have a problem or not. So at this point of time, if there is an issue, you'd probably see some messages on the screen, but you would see no transfer of files, or you may not see any messages on the screen. So if you're not seeing any messages on the screen, you want to make sure there's connectivity between a phone and a TFTP server. Easy method is from the actual PC that's acting as a TFTP server, can you ping the phone? If you can, good, you know there's connectivity. Number two, check to see if the firewall, the Windows firewall is turned on the PC and or if there's any third party firewalls and if it's blocking the TFTP protocol. And then the other thing also is, is there any type of natting going on between the PC and the phone itself? So if the phone and the PC are not on the same subnet, i.e. same VLAN, 
you want to check, you know, are there any access control lists? If it's a layer three switch it's going through, if it's going to some type of router, again, we want to make sure there's no ACLs, there's no type of natting going on. Also, is there any type of firewalling going on, et cetera, et cetera. Typically, uh, the firmware upgrade will take a few minutes. Uh, generally, it shouldn't take more than about four and a half to five minutes. In many cases, it might be even a little bit quicker. Uh, please be aware in this case, I only have one phone that I'm doing the firmware upgrade on. Both the phone and the TFTP PC are on the, are on the actual local LAN. So if this was be, being done across like a site-to-site -site VPN tunnel, um, and you're, especially if you're doing concurrent phones, this can take substantially longer. Okay, so we'll go back to the phone itself, and we should get a message here shortly. Okay, firmware upgrade is in progress, excellent. So basically the phone will indicate via the LCD towards the end of the firmware ingestion period, right before it reboots itself, it will give you the message. So most activity will be on the TFTP side as far as seeing what is occurring during the actual firmware upgrade process. And then it's only until the very end you see something on the phone itself. The phone itself takes about a minute and a half to reboot. And then once it reboots here um, and it comes up in runtime, we'll go ahead and check the phone to make sure it has 11.3.6 MPP firmware. And please be aware, you want to check the documentation at the time you're viewing this video. So if this is something you're going to be using with WebEx calling, let's say you purchased a phone or you had a phone from before that already had MPP firmware, but it had old firmware and you're having issues with the registering to WebEx calling and or another service that you're using a phone with perhaps, you want to go ahead and check to see what specific firmware either WebEx calling is recommending and or another service if you're using and you want to get that phone updated to that firmware because trying to register a phone with very old firmware you can uh, run into issues depending on how old the firmware is so this would be one of the first steps you want to take a look at during the troubleshooting steps okay so it looks like the phone's back in runtime and then we want to go into the settings and then status and product information and we have 11.3.6 MPP 8832 3 PCC phone so this phone's ready right now so if we want to register to WebEx call calling we can do so or if you want to register to an open source SIP server in your lab or if you're doing a different type of cloud provider, it's pretty much ready. So this is definitely one of the first steps you want to take a look at if you're running into issues with phone, MPP phone, trying to register it to either WebEx calling or a third party uh, SIP server. If the phone has older, firmer, then definitely you want to bump up the firmware to whatever is the latest version and or what is recommended by the actual SIP server. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it helps you. Thank you.